Hello, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I am good. I am good. And we thought we'd start today with just doing a little life up, nice little update, didn't we? And just, yeah. yeah, how's your week been? What have you been doing? Wow, um, it's amazing how much you can do in one week. <laughs> <laughs> I can think back now. I think, gosh, last week it was only last Monday and Tuesday. I came to yours, T A G C H Q. Yeah. Um, and we spent two days together, didn't we? Recording mm-hmm. some content for our members area because we've got a new snazzy, well, it's kind of like an app. Um yes. well, it's called a favicon, is the uh, official word. We learned that. <laughs> didn't know, not know what a favicon was a couple of weeks ago. T A G C Favicon. <laughs> but literally the click of a button now, our members from their um, home screen on their phone can get straight into their members area and all mm-hmm. the juicy, juicy bits for the self-led work. And yeah, we recorded some content on we did some little learnings around fear and some messages, some positive messages. And then so that was amazing. Um, what else have we been up to? I went networking on Thursday, yeah. which was great. Met some more incredible women. And um, and then on Friday was Nancy's birthday. Oh, um, yes, you've had a double whammy of yeah, birthdays, haven't you? Over the past yeah, two weeks. November babies. Um, and mm. what else did we do? Yeah, we went down to our local... Um, park and they even had like a lights thing going on and then I literally feel like I've done so much in one weekend oh and then Saturday another kids party and then yesterday Sunday the girls had their last day of their dance competitions um which another proud mum moment yes. three more gold medals and a oh, bronze love it. um so yeah like when I look back at last week now I'm like it really applied my time well like that's the th- that, yeah. that's the thing for me at the moment in these weekly practices that we do together on a Sunday I'm really working on how I use my time and using it effectively and just being really, really aware of what I'm allocating to when and just showing up in different kind of like, we've discussed this before, we like different modes. Like if I'm in mum mode, I'm fully in mum mode. And if I'm in TGC mode or if I'm in me time mode and I'm just, yeah, I'm really kind of working through it at the moment. But yeah, I'm reflection. Wow, did quite a bit last week. Yeah. (laughs) so what about yourself how how was your week yeah well obviously it was great to to spend time with you I think we're still always like when we see each other in person it's like yeah you are a real person we're all good we're all good (laughs) we're not just like imagining you um so yeah that was wonderful and like you say just so much going on in the world of TAGC we also guys have a brand new website that is up and running and ready for you to have a little look at um, so much good stuff so many events that are going to be coming on there um, as well and going into the new year more in-person events so that's yes. exciting yes. um and then yeah I've had a bit of an emotion, emotional roller coaster for okay <laughs> okay well I say emotional roller coaster I also went networking which was brilliant and I went into a prison to network which was incredibly eye-opening and inspiring really mm. um kind of hearing prisoners pitch business ideas and just kind of feeling that support for them in terms of their rehabilitation journey and stuff so I came away feeling a a lot of things I think you know and you just get very head full of like oh I feel like I need a good good sleep or yeah (laughs) just (laughs) Oh, um so that was but obviously incredible because I met so many so many incredible people there um and then I do obviously my dog walking on a Thursday. Yes. Where I kind of fell in love with a little doggy there, um, which it is not the right time for me to be bringing dogs home. And it's been a bit of an emotional journey to kind of accept that. And I was saying to you, wasn't I? There was every, honestly, it was getting a joke. I was like, universe, please. Like, I basically asked the universe for a sign that my vision board and these things are working sent me a lot of signs sent me this dog that is literally on my vision board um but I believe that this came for me to detach from things um so that was really really an interesting experience and why I say it's been a bit of an emotional roller coaster um but this kind of leads me in really to the topic that I wanted to speak about today it's a surprise for me so let's (laughs) let's go for it well it's something I've been wanting to talk about for a little while because it's about um the alcohol-free journey that I've been okay, on yeah. um, and I know you came on it as well um, so since May um, I've been on this alcohol-free adventure and it was July, the end of July that I went fully alcohol-free and I did three whole months um, of nothing um, and in that time 
oh, I learned so much about myself. Like, I think when you think of um, dry January and things, it's like hide away for a month, feel a little bit depressed because you're not going out and you're not doing anything. Then for me, it was like get to February, make up for it, go out again and like just drink too much wine, (laughs) make up for it. So what I will do is put in the show notes the resources that massively helped me. There was a podcast by Andy Ramage and uh, on Dr. Rongan's um, podcast and a book as well. And I just wanted to talk about this today because I know we've both been wanting to because we've learned so much, haven't we? Yeah, we we really have. <laughs> yeah, just we the really emotions have. of going through <clears throat> like the attachment to alcohol and I think there was just a bigger attachment than I ever realized and I was I'm not a a crazy drinker but I was turning to it all the time for like a whether I'd done well and I'm like oh I've done done a good week let's just relax with a glass of wine or oh it's been a lot this week I'm just going to grab a glass of wine um and I think really removing that has has been a journey and it's made me go even more inwards and obviously this is what we you know the whole journey is about going inwards isn't it and finding out who we are understanding more about who we are and and why we are the way we are Mm -hmm. um and it's been an incredible three months like I have to say like I've really really loved it I've gone through a lot in terms of like feeling like I'm now the boring one that came up a lot (laughs) like (laughs) yeah I'm gonna just be seen as that person like oh I don't really want to hang out with Charlotte anymore she's a bit she's a bit boring now um all the motions but realizing just how that has been ingrained in us all Mm. through how we've been brought up around alcohol as a as a society um, so yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this, but no, this is good, and I think it's good because <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to just clear my throat. <laughs> <clears> throat. There we go. Thank you. Um, I'm really glad you brought this up today because I know we've been wanting to talk about this for a while, and I think we've probably both needed to be in a particular space in terms of being ready because I think we've yeah. both you're you're further ahead than I am so I started a bit later so it was the first of September yeah. when I downloaded the I am sober app which is an incredible app by the way yes. um, yeah and started my daily pledge and when you download this app you put in um, like your reasons why like why am I doing mm. this um, and then you can check in on those every day is that is that encouragement and I think the whole thing we're going alcohol free is I love the way you positioned it through um what you obviously you'd kind of been inspired by Andy Ramage and, and his content in this whole that it's 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 a journey and it's a oh, what, what what's the term you use like an um, sober an adventure that was it and being sober curious yeah and I think initially I knew I really wanted to do it I knew the reasons why I wanted to to give it a go essentially but I think I was in this weird space of like well what am I now yeah. Am I a drinker or am I not a drinker? <laughs> and it, it really took me a good few weeks to get my head around Cat, I'm, I'm whatever I want to be. Yeah. And whatever I choose to be mm-hmm. and whatever works for me. So it really is an adventure. And I think if you are sober curious, I think let go of any expectations. Mm-hmm. Let go of like, well, what am I? Am I going to be sober? Am I now teetotal? Yeah. And just make a start and run with it because that's exactly what I did. So I first of September I downloaded this app and I, and I put in my pledge. Um, and I think I'm on 70, I don't know what that makes me, 78 or something days sober. Now I've cheated a little because within <laughs> those 78, I'm like a, a couple of weeks ago I had a, I had a glass of wine. I think it was the first glass of wine I'd had since the start of September. And I went into the app to be like, oh, if I pop this in, what happens? And it's like, it starts you right back to the start the beginning. of like <laughs> today one. I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. And I don't, this is like totally, I suppose, defeats the object. But yeah, um, I would say in those 78 days, let's say I've had, I'm going to go for maybe four, five at the most times I've drank. Now, for me, that is a huge result like a hugely positive result because I would say out of the 78 days old me old version of me that was was drinking the way I used to would probably have like more days than not like more Mm -hmm. like 60% of those days drinking and it's not that it was excessive drinking but it was 
I don't know. A Tuesday night, just a glass of wine. Yeah. Oh, Thursday, like you say, you, oh, I've done great. I had a great week and it's nearly Friday, so I'll have a glass of wine on yeah. Thursday. And, I and really, then it's Friday and then it's and Saturday. Friday, and then, and it's, then Saturday. it's like, oh, we'll have a chill one on a Sunday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and for me, what I think I didn't realise at the time was there was definitely an attachment to alcohol. And what I've discovered is that it was a... It, it was attached to a need. Oh, I need to have a drink because I've done well. I need to have a drink because the kids have... How can I put this politely? Um, got on my nerves today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, so, so a real kind of need of like celebrate or, mm-hmm. you know, kind of wallow sort of, you know, kind of vibe of like things are good or things are really, are really not good. Either which way, I'm going to attach alcohol to... to, yeah. to to fulfill that need and now half, having well say not drank okay I've had these occasions where I have drank in the last 78 days but on the whole not drank I really feel now like when I have a drink or if I have a drink it's from a completely different place and it's through choices because actually I would like to enjoy a glass of wine yeah. and again I'm not, sorry I'm just going to keep running with this because I feel like I've got a lot to, <laughs> lot yeah. to share around this in that what I struggled with prior to going on this on this alcohol adventure, alcohol-free adventure, was a uh, amount of alcohol. And I, for some reason, I just had an inability to, to stop. <laughs> I'm paying pay myself on it. No, I'm no good. I get it. I get it. It is what it is. You know, this is me showing up and... and, and, and being authentic and, and being, being authentic real. And being yeah. real. And it was a... I'd have a glass of wine and then you know, there's another glass in the fridge in that bottle. And then it would just keep going. Then I'd get to a point where the bottle's finished. I'm like, oh, well, what else? What else can we go rubbish in, in the back? Is there some gin? Is there some, <laughs> are the shops still open? <laughs> um, and or like if we're out, you know, if we've got friends around or we've gone around to a friend's house, like I just get carried away quite easily. Yeah. Um, and I just keep going and going. And then I wake up the following day and I'm wondering, mm, I'm missing bits from the evening of mm-hmm. what happened. I'm wondering, the conversations I've had that, that my husband talks to me about, I'm like, oh, did I, was I involved in that conversation? Like, no memory <laughs> of it. But then the, the biggest thing, I think, was I remember kept waking up on Sunday mornings and like I just remember repeating the same words to Mark. I've got to stop doing this to myself. Mm. I've got to stop doing this myself because some days then became about I was the last one out of bed and that completely goes against everything that I like to do I like mm. my morning magic I like to get up early mm. the last one out of bed grumpy groggy the hangover guys we know what that feels like right and then when you've got two two little ones to look after like some days are a really nice day and it would ultimately end up being that excuse me <clears throat> the kids would like get you know become lower in the priorities the priorities are about what greasy food can I get my hands on mm-hmm. how much can I stick in front of your ipad so I could just shut my eyes again or watch some trashy tv and I just I just I fell out of love with that guys yeah <laughs> I fell out of and, love with that. and it's this it's so personal for us all isn't it as a journey yeah. and I think that's what's like you say really interesting about a being sober curious and having like removing all expectations and B, it being an adventure to find out like more about yourself, more about why, you know, we turn to it or why we do those things. Um, and it's interesting because this weekend, I, so f- for my journey, I did, I wanted to get to the 90 days, didn't I? And I, and I did that and it was literally timed with then a week away um, in Cornwall. So I was like, that's quite nice that I can switch off and I can just, so I had it, but really, again, limit not not limiting myself, but you know, like just have enjoying it for what mm. it was, and just having like a nice glass of wine. Um, and since then, I've been doing that, and I've still had weekends where I haven't, but then the odd weekend where I'll be like, I'll have a glass of wine. This weekend, like I say, after it being a bit of an emotional week, kind of a bit of a ooh, I don't, <laughs> all over the place emotions week. Mm. I wanted to bring this up today to kind of, I drank from a different place on Saturday and I drank a little bit more than I, than, and I felt a bit rubbish yesterday. And like, I, 
I really just noticed this in myself. I've been really consciously drinking, so making those choices. Mm. Whereas that consciousness didn't fancy that on Saturday. I just wanted to let loose, which is fine. Absolutely fine. Sorry. So just for a bit of clarity on that, you say you drank from a different place. Can you just kind of explain what you mean by that? And is that a good thing or a not such a good thing? It was not such a good thing, but I really tap it into all that we know. It's a learning for me and it's a really interesting learning. So I think I just wanted to switch off and not think about things and not just it was escapism on Saturday absolute escapism Mm. to just numb the higher emotions in that week Mm. it's really interesting you've meant sorry yeah no it it was just so I've just picked up on it as being a different place and don't get me wrong I had a lovely night and I needed that but it was interesting waking up the next day and I can still feel my body today I didn't even go I've I've drank a lot more than I did on Saturday (laughs) before (laughs) but it was more than I have in a long, long time. And I can still feel it in my body today. And just like, just, ugh. and it was an eye opener because I feel like I'm, I'd say that there's probably, oh, I was going to put an 80% stamp on it then. 80% of me wants to be done with it Mm. (laughs) completely. Mm. Then there's, this, oh, sorry, this 20% that's like, but you don't need to restrict yourself, Charlotte. And this is where I think, like you say, removing expectations and just letting myself be on a journey with it is amazing and such a big shift because I don't have to decide yet. I'm on yeah. my way to deciding. Yeah. There's a good chunk and- of me that feels like I'm falling out of love with alcohol, mm. <laughs> slowly but surely. Mm-hmm. And there's another part of me that's like, but do I want to have the odd one at odd points in time? I don't know. So, yeah. So, oh, so much to unpack here. (laughs) Um, I felt like this could be a big one. (laughs) Yeah, firstly, just be so, so proud of yourself for Saturday. Now, even on, maybe on the surface, it looks like, oh, that possibly wasn't a good, like, it's not, I'm not saying it's a positive thing that you drank from a different place on Saturday because because you've said that you you vocalised that actually it was from an escapism and just numb, numb it, yeah. numb the things that are going on. But what I'm saying to just encourage you to be so, so proud of is that awareness yeah. of that. And I can totally, totally, totally relate. And I wonder if any of our listeners can to this. Not of late, but maybe going back a couple of years, maybe even less than that, 18 months, let's say, mm-hmm. before we started working together, <clears throat> when I was in a place of, coming out of the lockdowns it's all a bit of a gray area isn't it with timings but I felt like coming out of the lockdowns I'd lost myself didn't really know what I was doing with my life my restaurant that I own was back up and opening and running and functioning pretty much without me because it sort of takes care of it yeah and I was drinking and it wasn't from the need of celebrating or because I've had a bit of a tough day it was definitely a it was a numbing it was an absolutely I'm drinking to escape because when I'm when I'm drinking and escaping I don't have to face all the stuff that's going on and oh, this is the this is the choice isn't it guys and yeah. this is the like oh but do I really want to face it all do I, I really want to be crystal clear have all the energy be in the right space and I think this is I just I just feel so excited for anyone that is sober curious and does want to go on an alcohol-free adventure because initially I've just been a drinker from like probably the age of Booker and Coke days when it was like (laughs) yeah (laughs) I I think I I was yeah yeah but but it was not it's normal like I remember my parents and and my parents are amazing this is not a dig out on them but because obviously it's better to kind of not not control but like yeah if the kids are gonna drink let's have the kids do it in the house so I remember one New Year's Eve um had like three or four friends around I think we were maybe 16 my parents bought us some hooch I <laughs> some love hooch, it. if anyone's uh, <laughs> old enough to remember hooch um and but that you know that was like I don't know I just I, I feel like my relationship with it and how I think about it 
uh, it's just really really changing but you can just so see can't you from such an early age it's like oh I can't wait to turn 18 because I can get yeah. drunk and then everything's amazing and I have been that person mm. like from yeah. 16 up until what am I like 29 <laughs> <laughs> plus 10 um like I've just I've just drank you know yeah. from, from pretty much all my all my well all my adult life um so so yeah so my point is here sorry was initially it was a oh taking something away from myself it was a real punishment and that's how I felt in the past with the dry January yeah. just head down get through Jan- get through January because I'm just I'm just taking all this like pleasure away from myself but in these last 70 odd days I've seen such a major shift I have gained, and I know you feel exactly no, the same, don't you, Charlotte? Yeah, I absolutely. have gained so, so, so much. And I think this is still why we're both still on this little journey of like, well, do we drink again? I know we've chatted before, like, then we might want to just, I don't know, ching those champagne glasses together, yeah. you know, at the TAGC Christmas do, and we've got our employees, <laughs> and we're celebrating everybody and how much I mean, amazing things we're doing with the women of the world. Um, and I don't want to say yes or no to that right now. Mm. And I can say yes or no to that in the moment. But I think if I do say yes to alcohol, I just want to touch on something you said earlier. You, you said about like limiting yourself. And you, and I think you expressed it as though like, oh, that was that like a negative thing. But I'm I, I'm game for that. Like I'm now more, con- when I do have a drink, far more consciously drinking. Mm. And I am choosing to limit myself because I know if I don't and I go way, like have no boundaries, have no barriers and just go for it I know how rough I feel the following day and I know I could be massive amounts of regret Mm. so if I look back on Friday Nancy's party once we've been down to the park we had friends back for some games and stuff and I had a glass of wine um just before we left for the park and we got back I had a couple of uh we're big fans of trip trip drinks so the CBD oil drinks that's that non-alcoholic drink so I had two of those and then I just chose to have a small Bailey's as a nightcap now, one glass oh, of wine and yeah. one Baileys for me, that is a major result. That's I would amazing. be a whole bottle of wine, mm. maybe a couple more glasses when we got back here, two or three Baileys, easy. Yeah. So, But but I had a, an amazing time. Nothing was different. Yeah. And I, sorry, blah, blah, here we go. Here we go. No, 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 I love it, yeah. <laughs> when I first entered into this journey, it was, um, how do I tell people I'm doing this? Like, oh yeah, I'm the boring was, one. Yeah. I remember at Mark's uh, birthday. He's, oh, so yeah, I doubled, I doubled a little bit earlier than, than September. Sorry. So his birthday's in August. We had friends around for a barbecue and I got some alcohol free beers and I was hiding the label. You know, I was hiding yeah. the label. And my friend Claire, <laughs> um, she, she was like, not call me out on it, but you know, she was, she yeah. was inquisitive. She wanted to know why I was drinking alcohol for a beer and why I was holding the label hiding the label like of course are you pregnant I'm like yeah. no 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 um, and I just kind of explained I was just on this like adventure this journey um and, but yeah but there was a real stigma around oh am I going to be not cast aside like my, my friends love me regardless you know yeah it's, it's it is absolutely all on me this is this is all in my head um but yeah those things of, am I the boring one am I going to get invited to less things now because I'm not drinking um, will I have as much fun? And I've absolutely proven to myself, yes, I can, if not more, because I'm having and these Nick, nights. Yeah. And yeah. we had a games night a few weeks ago. We sat up till nearly 1 a.m. in the morning. Mm. And I drank nothing that night. That night was completely sober. Yeah. I had some of my trip drinks again. And we giggled and we laughed so much. But the Sunday morning, ha, huh, boom. Yeah, I could boom, get up, yeah. I could make this all breakfast, I could tie the house, I could do the food shop. Yeah. I was like, I can have it all. I can have it all. And, you know, looking at the shift from like, what am, is it taking away from me versus what I, what is it bringing? Oh, it is bringing me so much. My energy levels have increased. My consistency, yeah. my my ability to do all the things. Like at the start of this conversation, we reflected on the weeks that we just had. Would I have been able to have the week I had last week with doing all that stuff? And on reflection, I did a lot last week. Yeah. With throwing some, throwing some alcohol in there throughout the week probably not no and it would have brought a lot more I think overthinking and stress into the equation isn't it Mm. like and I think for me in in not drinking like I've had a lot less excuses like Mm. and my goals are a priority over a quick like numbing 
escapism have some fun and just have a drink kind of yeah. situation and like I don't know I I love the way like and obviously how we've again we'll share all of this in the show notes but having those things in your diary like a wedding or that night with friends um I know for me that looked like a mum's night out right in the beginning like having those things in your diary are your biggest tests yeah like in dry January we just don't do anything do we we just yeah. literally like you say it's like a punishment like yeah. and that's what it feels like whereas this is actually no that's the greatest challenge and mm. I I met up with um all the mums from my from my daughter's um class and um we live close to town so I driving is just crazy because we're, yeah. we're, we're really close so <laughs> I had no excuse like and it was just I'm just not drinking and I remember sitting with the menu and that decision being mm. so hard I was hard, flicking between cocktails mocktails cocktails mocktails everybody else had ordered and there was a lot of us out I knew I wanted to try that and I knew I, I owed it to myself to try the mocktail first and I did it took me I was mm. probably sat there without a drink for like at least half an hour 45 minutes it was mental <laughs> but I did it I walked up got myself a mocktail and then I had an alcohol-free beer after that and I came away from that I walked home and I was just so proud of myself yeah and so like I had those exact same conversations that I would have done if I was drinking like I had the same amount of fun and we'd not all been out together so it was really new and it was quite a like me me a few months ago would have absolutely drank and got a bit silly because I would have been a little bit nervous or a bit yeah. like oh. <clears throat> um and I just had the best time and I walked away from that just feeling so good and that was what was really interesting yesterday as I went back to that and I was just like I didn't actually need to escape from anything mm. in that moment but mm. that was my conditioning of a solution yeah. for something that was a little bit harder in this past mm. week and I just kind of reflected on it today and thought that that came from that <laughs> do you know what I mean like that's what I've picked up over time that that's the solution and if I'd have been more conscious and I'm not being hard on myself here and I think we all have to be incredibly kind to ourselves on this yeah. journey because it is not easy and there are ups there are downs and it's all around but if, had I not drank on that day, I would have woken up with that pride. And that's yeah. what I really missed on that Sunday. And not that I was really mean to myself yesterday. I really wasn't. Old me would have been. Like old me drinking back in January, February time was not sleeping because she felt so bad about having had a drink the next day. Like I'd mm. wake up feeling really anxious in the middle of the night. And that was what really prompted me to just look at my relationship with alcohol but I just found that really interesting, like, and it's just made me want to go into this weekend and be like, no, I'm ready to be alcohol free just for a little bit again. Yeah. Like you say, I'm I'm not saying either way right now, because I might, I know last Monday we were, um, we walked out, didn't we? And we just had oh, one dear. small we had one glass, glass of wine. Of wine. Yeah. I and had how long did like... it take us to make that decision over the size of the glass? <laughs> <laughs> we only had about half an hour anyway but we literally spent about 15 minutes and a half an hour See, our old selves, a 175 yeah our old what selves we've not even thought about it we were no, we were got a bottle we've got we would have got a bottle yeah. i mean like right we've got half an hour and get a bottle in easy yeah like and then we were just <laughs> necked it just to get out the pub or yeah. you know and it was a completely different place but um and i really enjoyed that glass and this yeah, was it too. isn't it like and i i really did and that's where it's it's interesting like just what what that looks and it's really quite mm. liberating to be like we don't have to decide right now what that yeah. looks like in one month's time two months time three months time like I know this Christmas that I want to be really present and alcohol is not going to be as big of a part of that as it has been previously and also for me I'm like if I manage to do mine through the school holidays I'm yeah. pretty sure I can do anything absolutely absolutely <laughs> Um, I just want to quickly expand on you reflecting on the weekend on Saturday mm -hmm. and you saying that um, how it was a solution, like it felt like a, sol a solution. And just to kind of like, just to say to anyone listening that, you know, is sat there thinking, oh, I do 
that's me I'm drinking to numb things I'm drinking to escape and that's Mm. my solution to things right now because facing the things it feels really hard and really scary yeah. just want you to know that that's okay and like we we have absolutely been in those spaces and yeah. you know and and can still find ourselves in those spaces yeah. and what we really encourage you to do is just dig deep on those compassion that that level of compassion and kindness mm-hmm. for yourself yeah and anyone that does want to start on this journey getting sober curious and alcohol free adventure know that it's not going to be linear it's yeah. not going to be easy. It's not, I'm stopping and boom, there I go, there's my 90 yeah. days. It is a roller coaster. And if on day 34 you have a drink, don't berate yourself. No. Don't be unkind to yourself. Just be so, so proud of all that you have done. Um, and just don't think you've spoiled it because I remember feeling that. I was like, yeah. oh, what have I done? I've ruined it all. It's like, no, Kat. And I, I've still like achieved massive things in that I've reduced my intake immensely. And mm. There is like with with new things like this in life, with with change overall, there is does become like a tipping point, doesn't there? Now we've gone long enough to be this tipping point where we're like, yeah. boom, we can see the benefits, we can see why we're doing it. So if we're kind of like going for that extra glass or you know, yeah. we can be like, remind ourselves, remind ourselves, remind ourselves. And sometimes we'll go, yeah, yeah, let's go for it. And sometimes we we won't. Um and it's hard in the first instance because you you just like that seesaw, you're just on the one side of it and you really can't see the benefits immediately. It yeah. takes perseverance and effort and willingness and mm. just just going for it really, doesn't it? And then once you start and, to see that, that's when you yeah. can have that momentum. Um and Definitely. so it's like just having the support, like mm. I, I don't know if I would have done what I've done if you without you and being able to talk to you like this yeah. um and just having that support of somebody else that's doing that I think mm-hmm. I would have very easily have like wanted to do it and and had a go but if you can get somebody that's just open to supporting you and that doesn't mean that they have to be on an, an alcohol free adventure at all yeah. um not at all but just someone that you can chat to about it um I remember just, yeah. I- I found the the book, which again we'll share in the show notes. That Andy Ramage, I always forget his name. The other, there was two uh, two guys, and I found because obviously I started it before um, before you, so I, I yeah. knew that you were always there to like lean on absolutely, and that helped me so so much. But I remember even just grabbing that book, yeah, and it was like giving myself just that half an hour before deciding and just rather than rushing all this we always rush mm. don't we every decision we make is just mm. like, oh, like I know I, I'm like that and I'm finding no just give myself some time and what do I what choice do I actually want to make there mm. um and it was just a lot of like self questions which sounds a lot but just I remember for me like if I had something coming up I'm like actually no it was in hindsight first could I have done that without al- alcohol that's what yeah, I used to ask question. myself mm. so in those couple of months before I went fully alcohol free I was like could I have like because I'd wake up feeling a bit ugh, could I have done that without drinking and I'd think about it and I'd be like like the weekend we were sat having such a lovely time with friends chatting having it you know just I could have absolutely sat there and I did not need I did not need the alcohol mm. to do that like and mm. I didn't and I think it was really interesting like the more I learned that that the more then I could ask myself in the future. So it was kind of like hindsight at first. Could I have done that without alcohol? Without alcohol? Yeah, I think I probably could. Then it was, can I do this without alcohol? With plans, the mum's night out. Yeah. And many other things um, you know, that came up. I'm just trying to think now. What other things? Oh, I've got lots of, well, obviously I was away and, and different things. Um, And then it was kind of just really tapping into that feeling of pride and... Yeah all that I gained that through not mm. and it was so much like you'd listed out like just the energy the clarity I mean so many of us I know I was sat in this space for such a long time I just wanted to feel focused and clear yeah. and know where I was going and literally dropping the alcohol has made me go like that with yeah. that like it honestly well even all this inner work has been incredible but that shift with alcohol has been a huge bump up in that journey like a hundred percent it's like life in high definition isn't it yeah without it in terms of clarity you know like whoa 
oh everything's yeah. really really clear and um yeah, yeah. that's good to have so, that conversation isn't it it really was <laughs> yeah and and we'll put all of the supporting resources yes. that that we have used on this journey in the show notes and I think we would just be right here for anyone who does want to go on this journey and just wants like you know someone to just be like oh if you have any questions like we're here but equally if you're not there yet that is okay, okay. and I think it's this is a personal journey for everyone and we both wanted to just voice it because I think mm. we can be in this phase of it really wasn't working for me anymore but yet I didn't want to change because I thought everyone was going to think I was boring and that mm. is the opposite like I have enhanced myself as a person and I feel that and I know other people feel that like around me that like actually I'm more me than I ever have been and that's really freeing um so you can do it if you want to and it's just yeah about getting curious and just asking yourself a few questions and giving yourself time so Absolutely. yeah, we're here for you guys and we really, really hope that you've enjoyed listening to this. And if you want to, yeah, tap us up any questions um, or just just let us know how you found this episode, um, that would be amazing. So yeah, sending so much love, everyone. Did you want to say anything else, Kat? No, anything? just no, just yeah, our DMs are always open, yeah. guys, and we are here for you and we, we believe in you. So yeah, yeah. we'll speak soon. Yes, yeah, speak to Take you care. soon. Bye. Bye.